Good evening. The new Greek government's not even a week old, but today the first major standoff. The country's finance minister said he'll no longer cooperate with the Troika, the European Commission, the Central Bank and the IMF, but only with individual governments as he seeks a way to write down more than half the Greek debt. The European Commission has appealed for calm and warned Athens against taking unilateral steps. But there's a looming problem. Greece is just four weeks to find a way to make its repayments or well, the country will quite simply run out of money. What happens now? We'll be asking the Greek finance minister himself in a moment. First, Duncan Weldon lays out the numbers you need to know. Just drink in the slow-paced peace that still exists in this community. But subtly, there's at least a breeze of change in the island air. Since 2008, Greece has seen many tense standoffs. Three years ago, they were between police and protesters. Tonight, the standoff is between the government and its creditors. The new finance minister has said he will not seek an extension to their bailout. The Greek government could be weeks away from running out of money. Greece has experienced the worst economic performance of any advanced economy since the Great Depression. Some of the figures are staggering. The economy? Well, that's 25% smaller than it was six years ago. The labour market is no better. 25% of the workforce is unemployed. And 50% of young people are without jobs. Living standards have been in freefall, and government debt now stands at 175% of GDP. That catalogue of woes is the background as Greece begins negotiations with its creditors in the Eurozone. <laughs> Yanis Varoufakis, the man responsible for those talks, was until recently an academic and blogger. He is now finance minister, and despite being told to stop now he's in this exalted position, he said he'll carry on blogging too. Negotiations began properly today, and the new government has three broad demands. The first is to write off some of Greece's eye-watering debt. The second is to reverse the austerity. And the third, to reverse the structural reform implemented under the bailout. It's this final demand that's the real sticking point. Despite European official disagreement, Syriza's vision for Greece includes raising the minimum wage, restoring some power to trade unions and ending privatisations. That is very much not the German vision of Greece. They want a competitive Greece and think these sort of changes are how you achieve that. But to Syriza voters, this is just an attack on workers' rights. A deal is possible, for example on things like an interest rate reduction or an extension of the terms of Greece's loans, especially as Greek tax collection has improved since 2009. Tax receipts are now 44% of GDP. But here's the big problem. Germany is currently insisting that countries like France and Italy implement the kind of reforms that Greece now wants to reverse. Can they really treat Greece differently? At an official press conference today, between the new finance minister and a representative of the Eurozone, you didn't exactly have to be an expert in body language to recognise there's no great meeting of minds. That was Duncan Weldon. We're joined from Athens now by the Greek finance minister himself, Yanis Varoufakis. Uh, minister, thank you very much for your time this evening. Just to clarify, you don't want to accept further bailout money, is that right? Suppose a friend of yours were to come to you and say that um, he or she had difficulty repaying their mortgage because of a reduction in their income. They lost their job or something like that. And they had a great idea on how to solve this problem. They would get a credit card and draw money from it in order to meet uh, the mortgage repayments for the next few months. Would you advise them that they should uh, continue to take these tranches of loans from the credit card in order to deal with what is essentially an insolvency problem? This is a trouble now over the last five years with Greece, where our uh, European partners and the previous Greek governments okay. have been extending and pretending. So a very simple and, uh, answer to that then. This is then. not something that we should continue. Right. It's a no then. You won't accept mm -hmm. further bailout money. No, 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 no. Let us... No, I understand that journalists love the language of confrontation. I not don't. confrontation, just a very simple understanding. This. Well, allow me to answer your question. This is not a question of take it or leave it, of ultimata. It is not a question of um, who is going to blink first. What we have in the Eurozone over the last five years is um, a crisis which uh, is unfolding with detrimental effects for the, you know, the integrity of Europe. 
And the result of that is that the only people who have really been benefiting are the anti-Europeans, the misanthropes, the racists, the, the fascists here in Greece, uh, the ultra-nationalists everywhere else. And we just want to put an end to that and okay. have a rational discussion with our partners, so, just to deliberate with our partners. So are you prepared for a credit line to dry up now, or are you absolutely sabre-rattling? This is a, a blink-first situation, isn't it? No, it's not. What we are saying to our partners is that something really simple that I believe a British audience uh, can really understand deeply in their bones. We are a government that has just won a mandate from the Greek people. What we are asking our partners for is a few short weeks during which we can put together very sensible, rational proposals that aim at one target. And the target is to minimize the cost of this crisis for the average European citizen, okay. taxpayer, not just for the Greeks. Sure. You're talking um, about a, a few short weeks, and yet in the last month, we have seen 7% yes. of Greek bank deposits withdrawn. We've seen Greek bank shares down 30% since you came to power. Is that a problem? Of course it is a problem, but I wouldn't consider this to be the problem. This is just a symptom. It is a symptom of a disease that has been going on for five years. But people are I gave taking you the their money of your out friends. of their bank accounts. They're actually withdrawing money from well, their accounts. But, but allow me to say that you're confusing the symptom for the problem. The symptom can always be very painful, as in medicine, but it's not the cause of the, uh, you know, of the disease. The disease that we're facing in Greece at the moment is that the problem of insolvency for five years has been dealt with as a problem of illiquidity. And any bankruptcy lawyer in Wall Street or the City of London will tell you that this is not a safe way of dealing with, 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 you know, with, with the difficulties that we're facing. And yet you have said that you won't deal with the Troika. Is that right? You will not deal with the institutions no, that are your creditors? Uh, by the way, let me say something. I, I was listening in, so to the extent that I could, in this wind, on this windswept <laughs> balcony on which I find myself. Uh, I was listening to your, and with an earpiece that is coming out constantly, uh, I was listening to your report, and I have to tell you, you know, I'm a great BBC fan. Uh, I've never s listened to such an inaccurate report. I've never said that we're not interested in discussing with our creditors. I've indeed, exactly the opposite, I said that we are very keen to enter into fruitful negotiations and discussions and deliberations with the European Central Bank, the IMF, uh, the European Commission, every single member state of the Eurozone in which we belong and rightfully find ourselves in. What we are not prepared to do is we are not prepared to carry on pretending and extending, trying to enforce an unenforceable uh, program, okay. which for five years now has steadfastly refusing to produce any tangible benefits. So explain to us then what that actually means, because you have called the whole construction mm -hmm. rotten. So will you deal with them as a body, because it's only as a body that they can help solve the debt, or will you not? Of course we will. And it was... Today I had a very fruitful meeting with Mr. Dyserblum, the head of the Eurogroup. And unfortunately, perhaps I should, maybe I should have made my remarks in English so that you wouldn't be lost in translation. My point was that we are very eager to hold discussions and to find a commonly agreed solution to this problem, a new program, a new agreement, you know, a new deal for Greece with our creditors. What we refuse to do, you see, the Troika that you mentioned has two different levels. One is the Troika of institutions, which of course we're very keen to discuss with. But then, of course, there are representatives here in Greece whose purpose is, they are very good people, very good people, but their purpose is to enforce and to oversee the implementation of a program which, in our view, has uh, completely and utterly failed. Okay, so let's deal, let's deal Even with the that European, then. Let's deal with that then. Yes. You want to reverse structural reform. You want to raise the no, minimum no. wage. No, um, no. Because no. that well, was what your manifesto said. Let, hang on a second. No, just a second. Just, let's take it one, one thing at a time. We, not only do we not want to reverse structural reforms, we want to deepen them, make them more extensive. We've had enough as Greeks of being in, this, in a country which uh, needs so desperately reforms and is not getting them. Greece has not been reforming over the last five years. It's been right. deforming as a result of um, 
sort of an implementation of a program that is really is not dealing with all the malignancies of the Greek economy. What about we the privatization of the ports? Are, are you going to go ahead with that or are you going to reverse that? Well, allow me to say one thing. Firstly, I'm personally and as a finance minister, I can assure you that the particular investment in the port of Piraeus, which has been unfolding over the last few years, has my full support. And I would like to, to be part of, a, of an attempt to, to attract to this country um, in foreign direct investment that has a, a similar effect on raising productivity and competitiveness. But the privatizations that have been mostly being pursued over yeah. the last few years have been a kind of fire sale in the middle of uh, a deflationary process where essentially assets that are potentially very valuable to this nation are being sold off during the deflationary crisis okay. for peanuts and even those peanuts are being thrown into a black hole of unsustainable debt. Forgive me, Minister, but um, there know, seems to be a lot of ambiguity in what you're saying because you, you present one face... No, there's face. a lot of ambiguity in your reports. Well, there's... Excuse me. Sure. Um, there's one face, I mean, though, isn't just, there? Just for one second. There is no ambiguity in our reports. Um, you're cutting me down and cutting me off. Um, if you allowed me, I know that there is shortage of time on a program like yours, but if we ever were to sit down and you allowed me to outline our program, you would see that the ambiguity is precisely that which doesn't characterize it. Perhaps your reporter's uh, report on okay. what he thinks or she thinks we said is ambiguous. Okay. So let's just get a couple of things straight, because it's all about values and about understanding who is at the heart of this new government now. Do you trust Germany? Do you want to work with Germany? Do you trust the country? Let me tell you something that I super think answers simple, your question. Super simple. Some do you trust Germany? Ago, yeah, very simple. Very, yes, I do. And I, if you had allowed me, instead of cutting me off quite rudely, I, I might say, I would have told you that I published an article, I think it was in the Handelsblatt, a very important uh, German newspaper, with a title, Europe needs a hegemonic Germany. Right. I believe that the, 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 the power train of the European economy, which is Germany, has to play a very significant role in lifting all the boats that have um, sat on the seabed after a vicious tide has, been, uh, has retreated following uh, debt deflationary policies that have not been good for Europe, not good for okay. Greece, and indeed not good for Germany either. Right. Do you, do you trust the people that you are in government with now? Do you align yourselves uh, with, for example, your coalition partner who claimed last month that uh, Greek Jews paid fewer taxes than other citizens and were given preferential treatment? Are you happy working alongside him? The wild beauty of democracy is that we have to respect the fact that the people of Greece have not given us an absolute majority in Parliament. As a responsible party, we had to make a very quick decision as to whether we want to drag out an electoral process, perhaps with the dissolution of this government, of this Parliament, and a fresh election at a time when the time limitations are so severe. We formed the government very quickly, and I believe that our partners throughout Europe were relieved that this country has a functional government. Our partners, the, mi the, the minority in our coalition, have given us carte blanche regarding economic policy. So you're not actually endorsing his comments, finding then. common ground. You're, you're, you're saying this is a strange bedfellow made of necessity, or you're saying it's fine? Well, does Mr. Cameron endorse everything that Mr. Clegg say? This is what, how coalitions work. This is the, the beauty of democracy. We have to accept the mandate that has been given to us and we work in the best possible way, optimally, for the interest of this country and for the interest of the average okay. European. The crisis over the last five years has been detrimental to the whole of this continent. And we want to put an end to this. We want to, to you know, to, a glimmer of hope to start shining by simply reversing what is a rather deconstructive process. Okay. Yanis Varoufakis, thank you for bearing with us. Thank you.